We're here today at Sport Car Motion to take a look at Morgan's Drag Civic. You ever wonder what it takes to go eight seconds in the quarter mile? We're gonna show you. This is Tech Inspection. This engine makes 1,050 horsepower at about 34 pounds of boost. A lot of things going on to make that happen. First off, it's got a K24 engine. Now, this motor didn't come in the car, so it needs mounts. It's got the Hasport mounts with 92 urethane. That keeps everything kind of steady. The internals have obviously been beefed up. It's got Crower rods. It has JE pistons. Actually, they're fairly high 11 and a half to one compression ratio. That actually allows them to make big horsepower to lower boost. On top of that, because it spins up to 10,000 RPM, they use Supertech valve train, valve springs, and keepers in order to keep everything under control. The cams are also fairly high lift, and these particular ones are made by Webb. They're ground from billet, they're really nice, 1,000 horsepower. The turbo kit is an AFI turbo kit. It's really nice, stainless. It's a twin scroll style. Feeds into this Garrett GTX 4202 turbo. You notice because it's twin scroll, it has two of these uh, wastegates. They're both vented up to the hood, along with the uh, normal exhaust. The turbo sucks the air in, actually, through this huge five-inch tube, which is ducted up to the hood. Now, once the air has been compressed, it comes through this Garrett intercooler up front, and then feeds in through this AFI center feed manifold. This is kind of cool because by doing a center feed, it more evenly distributes the charges to all four cylinders, and it helps with the tuning. On some things, when it comes in from the side, you may wind up with one of the cylinders being richer or leaner than the others, and this actually simplifies the tuning. It uses NGK race plugs, and for fuel, it has this dash 10 lines to go to the back with a pair of Bosch fuel pumps back there that each are capable of putting out on a fuel for about 600 horsepower. The two of them are combined underneath. They come in through this K-Tune Pro 1000 fuel rail, and then the injectors are injector dynamics 2200 cc injectors. Now, on top of the fact they've got these huge fuel lines, there's also a TurboSmart fuel pressure regulator, which is connected up to the boost. So as the boost rises, the fuel pressure rises along with it, kind of helping make sure that there's enough fuel for these giant injectors. Cooling's not a really big deal on a drag car. This half-size Mishimoto radiator does just fine with the cooling. One of the big problems you'll find though with turbo motors is there's a lot of blow-by. So ventilation is handled by a couple of large dash 10 hoses into this vent box back here. This is also made by AFI. On top of that, boost is controlled by this set of boost controllers over here. Now the boost controllers are controlled by both the TurboSmart boost controller, which is for staging, and it's also controlled by the Honda system. Honda has a traction control system that actually looks at all four of the wheels and how they're spinning. It just kind of hooks into the normal ABS sensors. And through the programming, you can control fuel and timing to help with traction control. But also on top of that, it's also doing uh, gear dependent boost control for the turbo. So it's not applying too much boost to the lower gears where it's really easy to, to burn the tires off. Because you're running uh, down a quarter mile, stopping isn't the same as it would be on a racetrack. So in order to make more room in here, they've got what's called a brake booster delete. They just have a single master cylinder that's then routed to all four of the cylinders. And that's usually enough to, to stop the car at the end of a quarter mile. Remember, they have a drag chute on top of that. And although it takes quite a bit of foot pressure to work this brake booster, when you've got a drag chute out back as well, it really doesn't take a lot of effort to stop this thing. There's some heat shielding and heat wrap in here. And that's to prevent heat from transferring into the driver's compartment or damaging delicate electrical stuff or, or melting the throttle cable, that kind of stuff. You're making a thousand horsepower, but now you gotta get it to the ground. So connecting the engine to the transmission is a competition clutch, triple disc clutch. The triple disc clutch has a lot more surface area because it's three discs than the single disc clutch. So it's not gonna slip like a single disc clutch would with this kind of horsepower. Now, once it makes it into the transmission, this K-Series transmission has actually been beefed up with PPG gears. Those are straight cut gears, which are a lot stronger. There's only four of them, because you don't need six going down the drag strip. And it's also got dog engagement rather than the synchros. 
Dog engagement is a lot beefier setup, and conceivably, you could even go without a clutch if you wanted to. You can just kind of shift it by taking the power off and pushing the shifter, and uh, you can get it to shift that way. Now, once the gears take care of that, it, it's fed into a special final drive that's also made by PPG. And then there's a PPG differential. And from there, it's connected to Insane drive shafts. Now, that's insane not because they're crazy, but that's the brand. The Insane drive shafts are also designed to hold about 1,000 horsepower. From there, they go into custom ProDrive hubs. ProDrive makes a 36 millimeter hub for this particular uh, suspension. Now, 36 millimeters is much bigger than the stock 32. That helps with strength where you need it, because that's usually the weak spot on these axles is that outer, outer joint. Now, in order to get the power to the ground, you have M&H racing slicks. M&H is probably the most popular brand you're gonna find out there right now. They happen to make a 24 and a half inch tall slick for this particular class. And on top of that, when you have that much traction with these M&H slicks, you're usually gonna have a little bit of suspension flex. Now, in order to fix that, what we have is these traction control bars. This particular unit's made by K-Tune. The lower control arms are actually mounted in rubber. With this strut bar going from the front to the lower control arm, this eliminates a lot of the flex that you would normally find in this system. And that's important on a drag car because you want it to track as straight as possible. You don't want the tires trying to drive towards each other as they're going down the strip. Normally, there's a pan that goes underneath this car. It's actually called a drip pan or catch pan. And if the engine were to drip some oil, it catches it. Or if it were to fail catastrophically, it would catch up all the parts. On top of that, there's also this scatter shield. Scatter shields are mandated by most of the drag racing classes. With that kind of horsepower going through the clutch, you wouldn't want the clutch or flywheel to fail. This holds on to all the parts if it happens to, happens to break. Sport Car Motion is trying something a little bit different with this build. They're running a lot higher compression. Now with the higher compression, they don't need as much boost to make the horsepower they want to make. And that in turn means they don't have to spin the turbos quite as fast. This might be a lot more durable and a lot more consistent than some of the cars you see out there in this class. I'm really interested to see how this thing works out for them. It'll be an interesting experiment.